Uh, take a look at this face. It's the face of a baby killer, a former nurse now sitting in a Texas prison for drugging and murdering a child and suspected of killing dozens more. Well, the national outrage here, a loophole in the law that will allow Janine Jones to soon walk free. Today, we're taking you back to 1979 to the pediatric ICU at Bear County Medical Center. And we're doing it through the voice of a whistleblower. Joyce Riley was a nurse who discovered Janine Jones' deadly secrets and still couldn't stop her. Now, decades later, Joyce says she needs to clear her conscience and get the, quote, blood off her hands. She put them through such misery, making them suffocate. That's what Joyce Riley says she discovered as she audited medical records at Bear County Medical Center. A disturbing trend of babies dying in the pediatric ICU. One child was bleeding in 500 parts of his body. 500 parts of his body, including his eyes, he was bleeding. Joyce had to find out what was going on. So she zeroed in on the times of death and found they all had something in common the 3 to 11 p.m. shift. That's my job, is to, I'm supposed to be good at looking at records. I looked at records and I found out that all those babies are dying on that shift. Coincidence or something more? Joyce kept digging and soon discovered it was one nurse's name that kept appearing on the records nearly every time a baby died. And it's Janine, I know it's Janine. All these babies are dying and it can only be her. I went to my boss and I said, there's a problem up there and I can show you that these babies died on 3 to 11 only and that they all died with Janine Jones. And I was told, I'm sorry, Joyce, you say that again and you'll be fired, you'll be sued for slander and you'll never work again. Joyce Riley was reassigned. Janine Jones kept working. Imagine that child laying there not knowing that this woman was playing with him like a cat plays with a, a mouse, making them go through these horrendous, painful, painful situations. Joyce was convinced these baby deaths were not due to natural causes, but by murder. She would find something or some way, either heparin or dilantin or succinylcholine, that she would crash that baby. And then knowing how she'd crash the baby, she could help revive the baby and be the hero. And she loved that. And Joyce believed Janine wasn't going to stop. She didn't care who she hurt or what she did. Riley says the pattern of little babies dying went on for several years. You don't look for what you don't want to find. And I believe that the hospital had an inkling all along of what was going on. For the sake of a wrongful termination suit or the threat of that, they literally allowed babies to die. And Janine Jones just kept on working. She landed a new job, this time at a clinic in Kerrville. That's where Chelsea McClellan came in for a routine shot and never made it back home. In January of 82, they knew this. They dismissed Janine in March of 82. And in September of 82, Chelsea died. Chelsea should have never ever died and I know I I kind of think Chelsea is the angel that finally stopped it authorities had found that Jones injected Chelsea with large doses of a muscle relaxer that caused short-term paralysis and it stopped her heart that's when Jones was convicted and sentenced to 99 years in prison but and 60 plus years for injuring another child in a separate incident but for other families who lost a baby on Janine Jones watch this was not justice, at least not yet. I'm coming forward because I want every parent who had a child that died in the Bear County PDICU from 78 to 82 to come forward, every parent. But let's put it all together and find out how many deaths there were and keep Janine behind bars. She had, can never get out. She, there's no reason that she would ever change. And now Riley is not the only former nurse speaking out. Sherry Pendergraf also worked as a nurse at Bear County Medical Center. She too told us that she noticed a troubling pattern in infant deaths and that medical records showed it was happening on Janine Jones' shift. 
The hospital is now closed, and we tried to track down all the key administrators from those years and found that they had passed away. Well, prosecutors tell us at this point they don't have any plans to open a case because there's not enough evidence. As for Janine Jones, prison officials declined our request for an interview due to her poor health, but she has always maintained her innocence. So why didn't Joyce Riley just confront Janine Jones? I asked her that. So why didn't you just confront Janine Jones and say, I know what you're up to? A lot of people did. A lot of people did. I didn't. I wish I had of. There's so many things I wish I had of done now. I mean, this is the most impacting thing in my life ever. This, there's nothing that has been as significant as what I have to live with on a daily basis because of what I did or did not do. And since our investigation began five months ago, we've interviewed many of the key players in the Janine Jones case. And as a result, new families are coming forward. You're going to hear from one mother who lost her son on the death shift and how she's fighting alongside with us to keep Janine Jones behind bars.